Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy. In the last part we got here to the Marsh Cave. And now we're gonna continue on with our first new enemy for the part, Shadows. 50 HP, weak to fire holy, they resist ice, earth and statuses, and their attacks can cause darkness, which is bugged in this game, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, it looks really glitchy in the background, but of course, uh, this game is aged kind of bad. Well, that's only because uh, the, the viewers can't see this, but for some reason when we do this thing through the Skype screen share, uh, Windows Media Player really decides to glitch out, and some parts of certain frames will be left behind in future frames. Uh, it fixes itself when something big happens on the screen, but it does that for some reason. I actually thought that was initially a video glitch entirely back when I was doing Battle Network 3, and then those early video uploads glitched out. Ugh. Didn't you have to, like, do a replay of those because, the, the, like, the video quality was really bad on one of your videos, or was that X4? Uh, X4 I'm redoing just, well, because that's for currently going up, that's why he's talking about this. Uh, because I was going through a lot of stuff at the time, so yeah, but, uh, I had to re-upload entirely the early parts of Battle Network 3 because YouTube's uploading was glitched at the time. Anyway, next new enemy is a gargoyle, 80 HP, they resist Earth, and that's about it. Gargoyles are annoying in Final Fantasy XII. I forget what they would like in that game. Gross. They're like imps. I think the ones in uh, Giru Vagan are the worst, in my opinion. The Barons, or whatever they're called. I hate them. Gargoyle years. Barons. I don't know why, because they, they always inflict blind on me, and then they attack me. And then, the because I'm trying to ca uh, cast magic on them, the Diacon Entite ends up uh, ambushing me. I don't quite recall. It's been a year since I last did a full playthrough of 12, and even then, when I went back to it recently, I didn't find it that fun, so I just kind of stopped. Ah, uh, how the aging of games can affect something. And yet here I am, playing a game that is, at this moment, almost 30 years old. Actually. Yeah, wow, this came, this came out in 87, so yeah. Anyway, next new enemies are Crawlers. They're just called Crawl in the original translation here, though. 84 HP, and the only real special thing about them is that their attacks can cause paralysis, which, unlike Darkness, is not bugged. So they got that right. Most annoying Crawlers, in my opinion, are Final Fantasy VI. Where were they in VI? They were near the dinosaur... the dinosaur f forest. Like, oh. that really special grinding area. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I don't generally remember where most areas are in 6, aside from, like, really big ones, like the Brachosaur, for fairly obvious reasons. And the Outsiders. Freaking ninjas. Oh, I hate that. Yeah, those guys are... I, you know, I actually find those guys harder than the, Bra uh, than the Brachosaur. Even when I have my character practically maxed out. By the way, if you see me find any good weapons or something, I generally sell them. Because a lot of the... Items that, like, do extra damage or to one specific enemy type. By the way, I'm cutting outside so I can use a tent. Uh, most of the I items that do extra types of damage towards certain types of enemies, like werewolves, dragons, or undead, uh, generally aren't that useful to me, because I rarely ever encounter those types of enemies in a consistent order. Except for Loki's loot in Final Fantasy IV! That's like, because I think that's the really game broken way. late in four. Anyway, next new enemy is Werewolf, known as a werewolf in the later translation. 68 HP... Uh, they regenerate 3 HP every turn, but I forget if that's bugged in this version, because I know one enemy's regen is bugged, I forget if these guys ha is. And their attacks can cause poison. Maybe they have rabies. Possibly. Now, as to why I cut out of here, that room I was in about 20 seconds ago... Uh, actually, as you can see, uh, this is what happens when your characters get poisoned, you have to use a pure poison, uh, potion on them. And as you can see, Zero was switched to the bottom of the party, so I actually have to press SELECT in order to access my party order. So I can switch them back into the order they should be in at this point in the game. Should be? Or is it just a preferred order? Or is there... Because uh, the way that the... Well, first off, uh, next new enemy. Ghoul, 48 HP, weak to fire holy, resist ice, and their attacks can paralyze. Uh, the way that the party order works in this game is that I believe first position, which is where Zell is, hit gets, I think, 50... is... is 50% likely to hit by an attack. The next two are 25. And I want to say the last one is 12.5, though it might be the last two that are 12.5. I quite- I forget at the moment, but that's my basic gist of it, pretty much. The higher up you are in the position, the more likely you are to get hit. Is that only in Final Fantasy 1? Uh, 1 has that, I forget if 2 has that, 3 doesn't. 
uh, it makes it, it's actually why I have my tank character up front. Now I'm going down. Now, yeah, as I was saying, I entered that, I exited that room 20 about 40 seconds ago, so I can uh, heal up because that was pretty much a dead end. We have to come down here in order to get the reason we actually came into the cave. By the way, I love the song it's playing right now. So are those bats wandering around, are they uh, bats that can attack you, or are they just there? They, they're just there. You talk to them, they say something like, squee, it's nothing that bad. Anyway, next new enemy is Scorpion. Get over here! 84 HP, and their attacks can poison. Pretty vanilla otherwise. Really freakish looking sprite, though. Actually, Scorpions uh, in Final Fantasy IX were awesome. Actually, a fun little fact, all the enemy artwork that you see here is based off the artwork by uh, Amano. Uh, Nomura wasn't really doing the art at this point. I think he entered with four. Think being a keyword. Actually, he may have been there for th two and three. I Actually, yeah. Hmm. I don't know. I know he was at least there for four. Maybe five. Now, the entire way this room is set up is that it's like a... I want to say a 4x4 four four grid of rooms, and not all of them have treasure, so that I'm only entering the ones that I believe have treasure. Anyway, next new enemy is Muck, known as Grey Ooze in later translations. 76 HP, weak to Bolt, but they resist Fire, Ice, Earth, and in pretty much every status. And weirdly enough, though they look like gel-type enemies, later, uh, unlike later versions that have... Um, unlike later versions of slime-type enemies, they don't have near-perfect defense, so you can attack them fairly easily with physical attacks. Okay, those are not flans. They're the pre the pretty uh, native versions of that enemy are pretty much the precursors to the flans, though. Got some gold there. So are there uh, monsters in a box in this game? Uh, they're versions of it. Uh, the, the way that this game does it is that there's more like set encounter points in front of treasure chests. Like, uh, there's some in this exact room, actually. Uh, the, the very important treasure chest, by the way. Uh, treasure chests like that will be empty because they're technically linked with another one. If you raid the other one, the other one will, this next one will be empty. It's weird and glitchy, and I don't get it. And the one monster in a box I'm not looking forward to is Shinra Yu. Ugh, Shinra Yu. Anyway, Copper Bracelet there. I'm gonna give that to Aiko, because that's a pretty good status buff for her without increasing uh, certain things. Because I think equipment do technically have a weight that can have an effect on their speed or something. I forget the exact description. But it's pretty useful to have lightweight type equipment on people like Ico. Ico, I love her so much. Yeah, the space right here, like this encounter, is set. And we got some wizards! Known as Pisca Demons in later translations, 84 HP, they resist fire, ice, poison, and pretty much any other status. These guys are pretty much the equivalent to mini-bosses for most of the game, though they actually become normal encounters later on. Basic strategy, make sure you have good enough HP, then go all out attacking on them, because they only have 84 HP, so they go down fairly quickly? Well, you had that little bit of hesitation there. Well, the thing is, uh, I I think I may have mentioned this to you at one point, but not uh, on cam. Uh, later versions of the game, especially the PSP version, would actually increase the amount of HP enemies have, and thus change some of the strategies around. Like, uh, a certain boss later on has his HP, I think, multiplied by 10 in the PSP version. And it's, like, doubled in the PlayStation 1 version. Wow. And these guys look like look a lot like Mind Flayers. They remind me a lot of Cthulhu. <laughs> For <laughs> obvious reasons. Just a little tentacle like things. They remind me of a uh, oh god. The the their face reminds me of the professor from Futurama. I can't remember his name. Why not Zoidberg? Yeah, Zoidberg. Yeah, anyway, we got the crown though. That's actually the crown that Astos was looking for last part, so we're gonna get that to him in a moment. But first, I want to raid the rest of this area for treasure, so I never have to come back here, I think. No, actually, wait, there are certain kinds of rooms in this place, that's right, shit. Well, mind you, I, I don't know why I'm saying that now, because, uh, this all happened in the past. Anyway, now we're back at Astos' castle. So let's give him that crown, because we want to be good Samaritans. 
Only he's actually the king of the dark elves, and now that he has Matoy's crystal and the crown, he's gonna try and kill us. Next boss of the game is Astos. Dark elf Astos, as it is, 168 HP. He uses rub as his first attack, so that's an instant kill, so watch out for that. He uses a lot of stats type attacks and magic in general, so that is your biggest threat. Fun fact about this guy, his design would actually later be reused for the Dark Elf enemy in Final Fantasy IV. In Final Fantasy IV! Yes. I, love I was that actually history. just about to- I was just about to comment about that. Like, th this guy's sprite gave me horribly, terribly terrifying flashbacks of Final Fantasy IV. Because there was a point where I, I was replaying the game, and I thought- Keyword being thought. I had saved after I uh, had talked to Edward and Troya, Ooh. and I went down to um, and went to the Dark Elf, and I was and then when I fought him, he was like, "Ha ha ha, you will die and whatever." And I was like, "Ah, forget you. Edward will save me." And then I was like, "Wait a minute, why is nothing happening?" And then it took me a second to realize I was like, "Oh shit, I didn't save. That's not good. That's not good." And, and I had to redo this thing all over again. Uh, basic strategy, by the way, for that fight is to fast the physical fighters heal when necessary, tier 2 black magic with zero when you're not fasting. Anyway, for that, we got Matoya's crystal, so if you remember that, which from like part 2, we're gonna go over to her and give her that. This is pretty much where that little trade quest ends, because we gotta give her this crystal, and then she's gonna give us something for that. By the way, how many people like died in this quest. room? Anyway, she gives this us the, room. Yeah, because look at all the skulls. Anyway, she gives oh. us. Uh, she gives us the herb, which is what we need to li uh, wake the Prince of Elfland from his little slumber that he had in the last part, or two parts ago, I forget. So now we're back in Elfland Castle to give that to him. And this is where the backtracking gets really heavy. This part of the game is actually really annoying to me because after we talk to him. He gives us a mystic key, which unlocks certain doors that we couldn't get through before. So it's at this point, I actually have to backtrack to pretty much every area we've been to and get certain items. First off, the next, the first one is actually, I think, here in the castle. No, it's... Where am I? <laughs> I think I'm in Elfheim Castle? Or am I at, uh... Yeah, I am. I'm in, I'm in the exact same place I was earlier. Uh, Elfheim Castle. Just exit around, you can come up here. Get a silver hammer, which is pretty good for Ico. Some gold. Every little bit helps. And some copper gauntlets, which are gonna go to Zell. That looks like a copper mace to me. I don't know why. It's gauntlets. Really weird design, but yeah. Technically, I think they're considered gloves, but yeah. Why, why didn't I? Uh, here I go. Uh, yeah, the, the gloves and copper... I just recommend giving the gloves to Sid, but you're generally gonna sell anything you give to Sid for armor. Because the monk does best without anything, without most stuff on. Just about to say. As you can see, considering the fact he has no more weapons, considering his fists are more powerful. Though, my first play through the PSP version, I actually forgot about that, so for most of the game, he had the, the iron nunchucks on, so he was dealing, like, 23 damage. And now we're back in the Northwestern Castle where we just killed Astos. No, I actually can't... Pardon? Uh, we're back in the castle we just killed Astos in. Oh. You are saying? I just heard I just heard a blast of you saying Astos, and I didn't understand why. Power Staff, I forget what that does. The Falchion, which is not a very useful sword. The <sighs> Falchion, for Final Fantasy V. Six, it was a good one. Yeah, in six, it's good. Not here. And iron gauntlets. Uh, note: if I'm not gonna be really using anything, I sell it because money. And now is we're back. money hard to come by in this game? Not really, especially when you did all the grinding like I did. And now we're actually back in the marsh cave because I think the lower, the lowest, uh, the southernmost tier rather has the most. Uh, treasure chest that you can't uh, get earlier. Anyway, f I think the final new enemy for this part, no, no it's not, is the Red Bone, known as Blood Bone in later translations. 144 HP, weak to fire, holy, resist ice, confusion, stone, stun, poison, dark, sleep, mutant, death. Pretty much. Or you could just cast a life spell on him. I forget if the, well, th that's what I mean by holy. Like, I just used, uh, oh. I think I used harm on it, but I think you can also use the, no, you can't use heal on them in this game. Yeah, you can in the remix, I believe. 
Because I think that was before this that, that entire little element was implemented. I think that was first put in three. Uh, think is a keyword, because it's been a while since I played two or three. I'm probably gonna do those over summer break. I can't wait for you to play uh, two. But what I want you to do is use the blood oh, sword hello, against Cursor. the emperor. Yeah, fun fact. Use the blood sword. Uh, yeah, this is actually one of the last times my mouse cursor will ever appear in a video, by the way. Because I, when I noticed, I was like, shit, but I don't want to re-record it, so this is one of the last times you might ever see it. Because I'm a lot better with that now than I used to be. Anyway, we got a thing in there. I forgot what it was, but uh, clearly you saw what just happened. I so. did that a lot. I don't like to have my mouse cursor in my video. It doesn't happen anymore for good reason. Uh, it wasn't usually my mouse cursor, although actually in Final Fantasy IX I couldn't see my mouse cursor, and but it would appear in the video as if it was on the screen. But I couldn't. I actually couldn't see it. Anyway, my new enemy is a cobra known as Anaconda in later translations. ADHP and their attacks poison. Nothing else special about that. Though, uh, you might remember when we encountered the Asps, I think it was last part, I mentioned that their name in later translations was known as Cobras, so there's some weird translation dissonance going on there. Are there two different variants of snakes? Uh, the Asps were purple, these guys are green, which is much more realistic. Well, I kind of meant in it's, later translations. Uh, th Pretty much all they did for the later translations was buff up the enemy's HP a bit, depending on the one. Uh, made sure that all of its attacks actually worked, and translated it as perfectly as they could. Don't mind you, it doesn't help the story, because this game's story is like Dragon Quest 1's, pretty much non-existent. No, even though the rival series, they had a lot in common back in the day. The Dragon Quest 1, I think, had the better battle system. And here we got a silver knife, which, if you have a black mage, I believe is a pretty good weapon, or is that for the thief? I forget. I know claws the black mage can use. But did it single- but did Dragon's Quest single-handedly save Square? No, it did not. Anyway, last new item for the part I know that's worth fact now is the arachnid, known as tarantulas in later translations. 64 HP and attacks poison. You're gonna see that a lot in this place, if you haven't noticed. And thankfully, coming up here, I think, is the last thing we need in the Marsh Cave. Uh, it should be. Let me check the timestamp. Yep. And in here we get all eight gold. Anyway, next location for the Magic Key is, weirdly enough, Cornelia Castle, back from part one. This is the only one you need to go to, I believe. Yeah, it is. Just go up around the castle, and you should eventually get to this point, where you can head south, east. That old man looks just like Final Fantasy V's sprite. I wouldn't be surprised if it was inspired by it. And these two rooms here you can now gain access to. You got the Iron Staff, useless. Saber, I think that's useful in later translations. The Silver Knife, which we already got one of. The Iron Armor, which I already have another one of. Iron Shield, have one. And TNT, which you might remember a guy at the Dwarf Cave needed in order to blow up a canal. So now we have our final goal for this part of the game. So we can now finally start exploring the world, eventually. The thing I don't really like is that you have to go through these really long processes to be able to be actually free. Yeah, and I, I, I just explore anywhere. Have time for that. Anyway, now we're finally in the last location for this. The... Uh, not the Dwarf Cave. Uh, the, the, the Temple of Fiends. There we go. Because now we can gain access to the last two things, which are not very useful at all, really. Well, the room blade in in seven and nine is useful. Yeah, and that actually. But, and this game, these weapons are pretty much useless. The soft potion's good because cockatrices are annoying, but yeah. And now we're back in the dwarf cave, so we can not only give that guy the TNT, but also because this is the last location for the magic key in the game. If you now notice, the mouse cursor has now slightly moved northwest. God, how did, well, it's weird. The way that that works sometimes is that my mouse cursor will actually be off the recorded part of the screen. But it'll be there when I, when I finish the recording. Maybe it's because it's, that's where it was when the thing started or what? I'm not sure. Now, like I mentioned, it's not exactly clear what he does until you go outside. But he uses that to blow up a canal in that land. In the later versions, they'd actually show a small cutscene for that. What I find interesting is that what you could do, what you could do for the whole 
mouse thing, which I'm sure you figured out by this point, but still, is that you could take it off and then disable the... Like, take it off, take it out of the window and then disable the, uh, the touchpad or the actual mouse or whatever you have. I, I, yeah, pretty much. That's pretty much what I do nowadays. And anyway, in here, nothing terrible. You still got a dragon sword, which would be useful if there are more dragon enemies. A silver knife again. Uh, the wooden helmet, which is not useful. The silver armor, which is actually very useful for Zell. I recommend you put that on him right away if you have a fighter. Or zero. Actually, do I put it on zero? Yeah, I actually put that on zero. Never mind. Give him the boost in defense. I'm being stupid. Mind you, this, like, uh, if you haven't figured it out, that's if you have a party like mine. And that's a house. So we gave Narek the, T the TNT, which is that guy's name, by the way. I'm very late in mentioning that. And we're pretty much done here in the Dwarf Cave. There's only one thing- Lally ho There's only one thing we'll be doing in here, and that is, like, endgame. So, yeah. Once we enter, uh, I think now we're pretty much done for the part. So thank you guys for watching, and in part 5, we'll be checking out that canal that Narek made, and seeing what else we can do now that we can explore the world a bit more. See, See you guys, guys then!